yes 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 you already know what it is we are here we are excited it is thursday night live let's go welcome 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 get in here get in here get in here listen tag a friend add a friend make sure that your people know it is going up now all right let me do what i need to do which is drop a comment to see and hope that the comments are working doing what they're supposed to do i see my girl daphne's in the building i see my girl rose is in the building thank y'all for jumping in listen as y'all jump in say hi hello what's up you can always i want you to invite a friend invite a family member invite a auntie sister cousin right here into the group i think i see aunt jenny someone else popped in whose bubble i cannot identify oh that's my sis janine it's so good to see y'all listen as you drop in do me a favor please say hi hello what's up so that i know that the comments are working did i drop my comment already i did so we're gonna have to pray that the comments cooperate with us they get weirder and weirder every week but if by chance oh i pressed something wrong if by chance i can't see your comments and i can't i know daphne would have said something by now i know marquita my sweetheart would have said something by now so do me a favor we're not going to be discouraged y'all just love on each other because i love for this to be engaging because that makes it even more fulfilling and i just have to believe by faith that um at least by the time it's time for me to pray that the comments would have come in they came on like five minutes into the live last time time before that it took like 40 minutes it's really really silly but we're not going to worry about that we're not going to be delayed we're not going to be distracted and we're definitely not going to be defeated hello sarah you i don't know what it is but sarah has that that magic super fast super strong faith and it's something about her that makes the <laughs> make the comments work so sarah i need you praying sarah i need you in the comments love on your sisters okay so tonight 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 we are continuing our series we want to pray we are continuing our series on the teachings of paul in the book of ephesians my god on today i'm excited but y'all know it does not take much for me to get there i come in on 10 because that's just who i am so we're going to continue in that tonight we transition here from our series on the big brothers in the faith which we concluded with paul and then we went right into his teachings and i know it's been a blessing to you as as it has been to me so let me do this let me go ahead and pray and then um and then we'll just rock it out like that okay Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we thank you. Thank you for this time, this moment. Thank you for this set-aside time, this sacred time to go before your word, God, to share sisters to sisters. God, I'm so grateful. I'm excited about what it is that you are doing for all of my sisters, God, those who are here, part of the Chosen Chick Discussion Group, God, and my sisters all over the globe. God, you are unleashing yourself in a new and just mind-blowing way and i'm just excited about it i'm nervous and excited because i know that you have excellent things in store for us so tonight god speak to us and through us let us hide your word in our heart that we might not sin against it god your word is a seed plant your word on the good ground of our heart that it will bring forth fruit more fruit and much fruit in this time lord god to the abundance and to the overflow all flesh decrease right now in the name of jesus holy spirit increase and take over have your way god throw your weight around thank you god for the lives the hearts and the minds that will be changed on tonight in jesus name amen 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 okay so um i'm already a little bit out of my normal protocol order but for those who may be new, those who may not have been around in a while, let me remind you of what the Chosen Chick Discussion Group is all about. Listen, we are rocking, y'all. Are y'all going to believe this? We are coming up on three years strong. Amazing. Amazing. This was birthed out of my spiritual dad posing a question to us in minister's class. He said, you have to go back and find what's missing. My sister Tiffany's in the building. Hey, Tiffany. 
tip love on your sisters in the comments i cannot see them which is silly but it's not new to us at this point it's happened too much so y'all just love on each other in the comments so when uh when my dad my pastor asked what is it that's missing it was just this burning in my heart and it was so far off my radar until he said it and i was just like oh man i gotta start teaching bible study again and I was kind of excited, but I was kind of like, oh, man, <laughs> something, look, something else for me to do, something else for me to add to the list. But I promise y'all, it has been exciting, exciting, exciting. And so Chosen Chick came about because I wanted to serve God's women so that we know we are not second class citizens. Hello. We know that we have the wisdom of God, that we are a help meet because we make things happen. That's just how God has wired us. Okay. So the Chosen Chick Discussion Group is a place for real women to have real discussion. We keep it all the way real in here. It's a place for you to live, to laugh, and to learn. It's a place for real friends and real compassion. You can celebrate your wins. You can share your struggles. You can request prayer. You can ask questions. There's no such thing as a dumb question because this is a place for real friends, real family, okay? I am the author and creator of the Chosen Chick Discussion Group. I am Artisha T. Bolding. I am an ordained minister and a certified life coach. Yes, did you know that? <laughs> Um, my specialty is building legacies of health, wealth, and wisdom. I do that through motivating women and entrepreneurs to birth their business book or brand. I ensure that you are no longer stuck in life, but thriving in success that's aligned with your passion and purpose. And I just love it because there's such a marriage between my ministry and my business. And God set it up that way. And I am in awe. I'm in awe. I am so grateful for the people that I get to work to. It is not a drudge or a chore. I love what I do. I love spending this time with you. So now that we got that out of the way, I just wanted to make sure that everyone knows who I am and everyone knows where we are. So y'all know this will be shared on YouTube later. So I'm going to engage with your comments as soon as I can see them. Prayerfully, I will be able to. And when it comes time for prayer, I want you to be as bare, as transparent as you choose, you can share your prayer request. What I do uh, tailor myself to is I don't say your name with your prayer request. Again, because this is going to be on YouTube, it's going to be public and the internet is forever, right? So just know that. And again, I need Sarah praying. I need Tiffany praying. Neen, I need you praying because I need the comments to, um, because it just makes that much more fulfilling because I know when I hit the spot and I want to make sure you're getting this, okay? All right, so... Um, tonight, 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 whoo, I'm excited. Tonight, we're going to be talking about the secret plan of God. Somebody say the secret plan of God. And if I could make a subtext, of course, I got this from my dad. He got this. Who is he? God, God got this. The secret plan of God is he got this. We don't have to worry. My sis Rose is in the building. Come on in, family. Rose, I need the comments working. I need you praying. He got this. Okay, we don't have to fret. We don't have to fear because God got us 100%. There is nowhere you can go. There is no situation you can find yourself in. It doesn't matter if you miss five Sundays, 10 Sundays in church. If you are a child of God, if you've done the ABCs, accept, believe, and confess Christ, hello, then you are his. He is yours. And the good news is God's got this. That's his secret plan that he has, has it all along. Okay. Oh my goodness. So last week we were in Ephesians as well. Of course, we talked about being alive with Christ and how blessed we are. We are alive in him because we've turned over this new leaf. We have this new life. We are new creatures in Christ. Okay. So what we're going to do again, I try, I got to try to get a little bit not traditional because that doesn't work for me, right? Y'all know I'm a little wild, but I need to get a little bit back to my Baptist training. I need to go to the meat of the text. Then I'm going to take y'all to these beautiful places that the Lord has taken me. Then come back to the key text. Is that all right with everyone? I hope it is because I can't see you in the comments anyway. All right. So this is where we're going to go. We're going to go to Ephesians chapter three. I'm going to start. I got several versions tonight. So if you're following along in your printed Bible, you're good. If you're following along in your device and you choose to flip the script, 
with the virgins with me, that's even better, okay? Ephesians chapter 3, I'm going to jump right down to verse 20. And I'm starting as I'm jumping out the gate in the New King James Version, okay? All right. Now, the secret plan of God, he got this, okay? And that's exciting to me. Because guess what? Let me just say this. Uh, it's just been, and my new beginning family can attest to this, and others of you can too, because y'all been texting me, we've been talking, and I know um, that us warriors, us that flow prophetically, us that have just decided to jump into this supernatural obedience, because it's not everybody, and I'm not trying to be funny, we have been catching it. You understand? I already told you my week last week was crazy, and God just let me break through that wall it was about this much space y'all i feel like i had to turn sideways and squeeze through there right to get through but how he has just poured into me this week through sunday service through um we had uh, of course an amazing bible study and we had revival last night that was not no joke okay god sent a prophet to the house who just did a fresh injection of life so God knows exactly what we needed. I, the way I've been refueled, even from testimonies, even from people just saying, yep, I've been catching it too, but guess what? We still here. It's just like, okay, okay. But the good news is God got this. God got this. So I'm excited about that. Okay. I look like I did too much in the copy and paste. What is happening right here? Okay. No, I know what that is. Okay. Jumping right in. Ephesians. Chapter 3 with New King James. I still can't see y'all comments, but y'all keep it up. Don't stop, okay? Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20, New King James says this. Now to him, it's familiar, we know it. Now to him who is able to do what? Not just a little bit, not just, oh, I guess that'll work. No, now to him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think according to the power this is it here that works in us to him be the glory in the church by christ jesus to all generations forever and ever amen let me let me start at the end and then work backwards that was 20 and 21 by the way the part that excites me most is the forever and of the all generations and the forever and ever so that means me that means my kids, which y'all know, my nephews and nieces are my kids and my God babies, grandkids, the generations behind us. God's got this. God's got this. He doesn't change. And the Bible says he doesn't shift shadows. Okay. He's got this. Marquita, God's got it all. No matter what, no matter what, no matter what comes our way. And the thing about it is y'all always tell y'all we have to be radical in our faith but radical in our dreams hello and radical in our prayer life those of y'all that's been rocking with me the long way you might remember what did god give me back last december to put on my vision board that's to dream big and pray bold if my office wasn't so junky i would turn this camera around so you could see that is right here and i put that before my face remember one of the key things that i taught was vision okay but how do you activate vision you keep it before your eyes hello somebody you speak the word of faith and you pray it that's what the cute little people on pinterest and on uh, etsy and all that they don't teach you it's real cute everybody was like oh it's the pandemic so women are crafting so let's get everybody talking about vision boards then it came real cute but guess what there's no vision without the grand visionaire okay it's cute and you can try to get it done Okay, but you can't get anything done without anything lasting, hello, and anything significant done without the power of the Holy Spirit. Because once again, let me just remind us, we are not in this world economy. We are in a kingdom economy, okay? We know, yes, we have to use cash dollars. It's America, okay? We don't have to do those things. But I'm talking about mindset. Mindset, that's what this is all about with Paul. Because the good news is, God's got this. The secret plan of God. That guess what? We're going to get into it in a little bit. He is revealing his secret plan to us now. It was kept from some. Some people ignored it. Some people heard it and let it fall away. 
but he's revealing it to us all we have to do is take it tuck it in our heart and rock this thing y'all okay he's able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all we ask so why not think big why not pray for that helicopter Okay, why not pray for that mansion? Why not pray? Come on, somebody, for that million dollar contract. Why not pray for that 10 year contract? Why not? Why not pray that your kids go all the way through school and do it with honors? Why not pray that your uh, kids have the next million dollar idea? Y'all, nothing is too hard for him. Daphne, I feel you're getting excited. Why not pray that? Okay, God has given us talents and gifts. He's given our children talents and gifts. See, that's why this all generations thing is important. We have to speak these things into our children. We have to live these, okay? We have to speak like this right here by being it. And then we have to speak it so that we see it and we change that environment. Because one thing about it is they got Facebook. They got my, what's the other thing? Snapchat. All of this foolishness. Instagram. They have all of this stuff on the TV, through the games, through these chats. So these kids is talking in these games. Y'all don't think that they just playing the game and you see the man shooting up the thing or you see them with the robot and all of this and all of that. No, these games have chat features. These kids are talking, okay? And guess what? That crazy kid that's in that classroom with that crazy parent. Come on, Rose. I knew y'all was praying. The comments are on officially. Hallelujah. Rose said, TikTok, thank you, Rose. You know I'm not... I'm a media mogul and I'm not tech savvy. Hello, mogul. Okay, I got a team that do that stuff. They know about the stuff. I don't know about the stuff. Okay, TikTok. Okay, they making all of these 30 second, 60 second, 90 second videos. They still doing these stupid challenges. Okay, they doing all of this sexual stuff. All of this jumping off of this stuff. Set this on fire. Put your foot up in the air and put a bucket of water on it and little dumb stuff like that. Some of it's fun and innocent. It's just like, okay, kids will be kids. But some of that stuff is not innocent, okay? And the devil don't care who he used, okay? But the good news is, like my um, sis Tiff said, the enemy can't touch us. He can't touch nothing connected to us. And so, but how does that work? How do I activate that? How do I get into this secret plan? Come on, somebody. How I get into it. Come on, Marquita. How do I get into it is I got to know. That God got this. I got to continue to speak the word of faith. I'm not just going to say a secret prayer. Don't say nothing out loud. Don't teach nothing. And just think, okay, well, God, you know, you will do it. Whatever. Mm, it don't kind of work like that. <laughs> it don't work like that. Tiff, what you say? The devil don't care who he used. So if he used one of these unlearned kids with parents that got, let me stop calling people crazy, but we know they're crazy, but parents with unregenerated minds, hello, allowing all kind of anything in their household, then what? how does that stuff find its way into your household? You may ask, oh, I'll tell you, through the TikTok, through these dumb little chats, through them texting one another, okay? So what do you have to do? And I'm looking at y'all, I can't even see everybody that's in here, but the ones that I can't see, I'm looking at some amazing moms, I'm looking at some amazing God moms, some amazing mother figures. Come on, I think that's Miss Sharon just jumped in the building. Hello. I'm looking at y'all and I'm grateful. I'm hopeful because I know that you won't let these kids, I'm grateful um, and amazing aunties. I know that you won't let these kids fall by the wayside. I know you're going to say, hey, come here. Stop that. Hey, come on. What y'all talking about? What's going on here? Because y'all, we got to be it. For them. And then let me just tell you something. Since Nina's in the building, my sister Janine, and our bishop has said it, and then the prophet came and said it last night. So let me just let me just jump it in here. Then we're gonna go to the next verse, I promise. If we want the people to believe what we're saying, if we want to have credibility with people on this faith walk, then we have to walk it out, we have to activate this people need to see us flowing in this they need to see us come on here we go they need to see us being healthy and wealthy and wise we need to work the word because the word works if we want people to believe that the word works we got to work the word and we got to be the proof that the word works was that paul y'all that said living epistles hello somebody this is what we got to do this is what we got to do. And I said this when my book went number one on Amazon. 
God don't care nothing about accolades. He really does not. He really does not. But the world that needs to get to know him, hello somebody, they do. So we got to be number one. We got to be the best. We got to be educated. We got to be excellent. Okay. We got to get that dust off of us. You understand? We have to be the CEOs. Come on, Tip. We have to be that. We have to be in these positions. We need to be the gold medals. We need to be the award winners. We need to be on the big stages, Daphne. Come on, somebody. We have to. So the world can be like, it's, it's something about her. It's, it's something to this thing here. Let me find out where she going to church. Let me see what's going on there. We need to have the number one podcast, bro. Number one on YouTube. Okay? With your girl, don't play with me. I'm climbing. Let me just say, I'm climbing. Watch me. Okay, the Hill Girl YouTube channel. Don't play with it. Okay, I will be dropping the link later. All right, I'm just saying, just keep your eye out. You understand? Let me see what you said, Rose. She said during the pandemic, one of her patients informed her that the children, when they went to remote learning, they found other ways to group chat. Yes, they were doing it before then, but they got real thick in it during the pandemic. Yes. Because nobody mama wouldn't let no, nobody mama with no sense. And if you don't fall in that category, I love you, but I said what I said. Nobody would, uh, mama with no sense wouldn't let nobody go in over no kid's house. No, maybe a cousin. But if you was like, my husband, my husband's like, nah, we ain't getting ready to just go over in a whole bunch of family house. And if we do, we gonna keep a mask on the whole time. Like he did, especially in 2020, he did not play that. He was like, nah, folk, no. And I didn't play with it either. Cause like I say, y'all just learned about what a ventilator is. Hello. I know quite well, Daphne knows quite well what a ventilator is. Jess is not here tonight. Jessica Smith, somebody can tag her in this. Jessica Smith knows what a ventilator is, okay? I know what it's like to drag an oxygen tank around. Y'all just learned about that. So I was not playing with no corona, especially when it first jumped off. You understand? So yes, so Rose just pointed that out. That was an excellent point that that's how, um, you know, that's how the kids got real, real thick in it. And they say anything because guess what? They are sponges. They're going to say what their parents are saying, what their big cousins are saying. Okay. So if you have a kid who has um, a little bit of perversion going on, and I shouldn't even say a little bit because that's like a little yeast. It's going to blow up all of the dough. When you have a perversion going on, when you may have an adult, come on, somebody acting on his children. This is not in the notes and we got to get off of this. When you have somebody, a child, an adult is exposing a child to these things, is acting upon the child and to these, a product of their environment, Tiffany. Hello. Then guess what? That child in many times either does not know that that's not normal. Okay. Or in a crying out of it is going to share it and then may try to get somebody in because you don't want to be in that alone. Oh, guess what? This is what's happening. And then that unlocks and activates a curiosity in your kid. And then, okay. But the good news is God got this. So this is why y'all, y'all know I don't have birth children. I have 15 nieces and nephews. Okay. Two generations of them. Like the babies that started having babies. You understand what I'm saying? And so what I know is we have got to speak life to this generation. We have got to be aware. And if y'all don't know nothing else, y'all know I'm a seer. Okay, a discerner. So we have to be aware of these things. We can't be ignorant, hello, to the devices of the devil. All right, so that's what this is all about. But the good news is, God's got this. The good news is that he's choosing to reveal his secret plan to us. It's an honor and a pleasure. An honor, okay? Hey Amen. Y'all talking to each other. I don't know what y'all just said. <laughs> and misery loves company. Absolutely. So, but the kids don't even know that. Once again, that's a spirit of perversion. That's a spirit of darkness, twisting them, shaping them, and nudging them in a place. And if they don't have an adult that is standing as an intercessor for them, then that's what they're going to do. Okay. So, all right, come on. We got to get off of this here. Um, y'all, that wasn't but two verses. The Lord Jesus. Let me share this real quick because I want to share the message version because y'all know I love the message. And I think the meat of my text is message tonight. It is. So I just want to look at that 3 and 20, Ephesians 3 and 20 in the message version real quick. Listen, y'all know this. If y'all have ever texted me and asked me to pray or be praying, it's two things that I say to you. I say, we believe God 
And then what do I say? I say, God can do anything. Tell me I'm lying. That's that's what you're going to get from me because that's what I stand on. And guess what Paul right here said in the message version? God can do anything. You know, far more than you ever could imagine or guess or request in your wildest dream. That don't call me no lie. <laughs> he does it not by pushing us around, but by working within us. His spirit deeply and gently within us. Y'all, I love the message version. Y'all know that. I love it. God can do anything far more than you ever could imagine or guess. I like that because sometimes, guess what? You don't know what you don't know. So sometimes we don't know how to pray. Thank God for the Holy Spirit that intercedes for us with groanings, okay? Because sometimes we're like, okay, God, well, I want the approval, so send me to the right person and do this and do that. But you don't know. Listen. My dad teaches this. You don't know if a lie needs to be told on you to get you to the next door. You don't know if somebody need to get fired to get you to the next door. You don't know if somebody needs to get promoted. You don't know. So you don't know what to pray. So this is why it's good news that God got this. Okay, and now we say, God, thank you that you always have my back. Thank you that you can do exceedingly and abundantly. Thank you. So sometimes I just pray, God, surprise me. God, blow my mind. God, glorify yourself. That's the easiest thing to do. God, glorify yourself. Sometimes that can be dangerous, but I'm not trying to scare you. God, glorify yourself. I'm getting ahead of myself with my notes, so let me stop there. Okay. Learning it. Hey, Nika. Our own mind can be our greatest weapon or our worst enemy. We have to keep our mind stayed on him. Hello. We have to trust him. That's how we're in perfect, perfect peace. Okay. Dad is teaching this week on cultivating the ground of your mind. Oh my God. I'm about to talk to the Lord to see if he's going to let me repeat that. Because that is, woo, it's good. Okay. So yes, your mind can be so powerful. Your mind not can be, is powerful. It's up to you if that power is going to be used for good, hello, or for evil. All right, what's your superpower? Are you going to use it for good or are you going to use it for evil? That's it. Okay, come on, let's go. There's a song. Y'all already know it's almost always a song. So let me just hop on that. Now I got to switch to New Living. Okay, but I want you to hear this. We're talking about the secret plan of God. He got this. Okay, Psalm 118, verse 14 and 15. This is New Living. Okay, you can write it down or you can turn to it. The Lord is my strength and my song. He has given me victory. Somebody please put victory in the comments since they're working and I can see them. Victory. Somebody put victory in the comments or you could put the V, the peace sign, which is V. Oh, and isn't that funny? That the peace sign also means victory. Come on, God. Let me get let me get back in here because it's about to be it's about to go a whole nother way. <laughs> He has given me victory. Songs of joy and victory are sung in the camp of the godly. The strong right arm of the Lord has done glorious things. Y'all, the good news is he got this. The secret plan of God. Okay, come on, somebody. He got this. So we can sing songs of joy. It's good news to us. No matter how crazy it looks, no matter who you thought wouldn't have said that crazy thing, wouldn't have done that crazy thing, wouldn't have betrayed, oh my God, wouldn't have betrayed you like that, okay? But the good news is, he got this. His secret plan is that he has already maneuvered, oh my God, maneuvered things so that you will have the victory, so that you will come out on top. It's written already that you succeed. It's written already that you win. It's written already that you come out on top. Okay, good question. Let me see. Do you have to know his secret plan or are you willing to trust him enough that you let go and let God? That's it right there. Let go and let God. Because the good news is <laughs> he got this. He got this. You, Some of us reformed, I'm going to say, hallelujah, perfectionist, control freak. Come on, somebody, tell the truth. Blink if it's you. 
Blink if it's you. Micromanager want to know everything. Hello, somebody. Okay, looking for the A and Z of it. Hello, somebody. Okay, some of us, it is hard to relinquish control. And see, that's a dirty little word right there. Control. But God is in control, whether you realize it or not. Whether you flow in it or not. God is in control. Okay, so either he's going to shape you and mold you like clay, or either he's going to break you. Okay, somewhere in these notes, I got snap you like a twig. And guess what? In love. Parents, you'll feel me on this. Sometimes you have to whoop that honey. Or sometimes those of y'all that may not use uh, physical punishment like it, like it was when I got raised, I got beat with everything. I'm not saying it was okay, but guess what? She did what she had, what she had to. She did what she thought was best. Okay. Listen, grandma says a hard head make a soft behind. And what that mean? That means you keep on disobeying. You're going to get your behind whooped. And guess how God does that? God does that through life circumstances and situations. If you are out of his will, then he's just going to have to open life up and let them whoop that behind a little bit. And then you come on back in and you say, ooh, I didn't like that as much as I thought I did. <laughs> that didn't feel like, like that five minutes of pleasure was not worth 18 months of crazy. So let me get back over here and do what it is that I know I'm supposed to be doing. Hello, somebody. Is anybody else a witness? It cannot just be me. It cannot just be me. So you can't know the A through Z of it. You can't. If you knew the A through Z, then what would you pray about? Would you even go to the church? You would be home trying to write a book. You would be home trying to write an agenda book, Rosemary. If you knew everything. Okay, all right. Well, Tuesday, I'm going to do it like that. Wednesday, I'm going to do it like that. Thursday, I'm going to do it like that. Saturday, I'm going to be able to get a nap. Okay, boom, boom, boom. Hello, somebody. Marquita. Okay. All right. I see you blinking. I see y'all. I see y'all. I know who I'm talking. I know my people. Okay. All right. Come on. Let's go to the next thing. All right. One more place. Then we're going to get back to the meat. Okay. Oh, baby. Let me tell you something. God is good. I'm doing good on time. <laughs> I scared myself for a second, but I'm doing good on time. Listen, it's okay to have um, a nervousness. And it's okay. Somebody wrote the book. I, I believe the young lady got a whole course on it. I, and it's probably more than one coach. Do it afraid. Do it afraid. God don't care nothing about you being. Don't be fearful. Okay, the only fear you should have is a reverential fear for the Lord. Lord, I respect you. I honor you. I'm, I'm, I'm fearful to do what you told me not to. I'm fearful not to do it your way. That's the only fear that you should have. But being afraid like, oh, man. At some point, y'all, you got to step out of, I'm getting ahead of myself. You got to step out of that boat. At some I promise you, if you keep walking with the Lord, loving the Lord, if you flow in purpose, if you say you the people that you're telling me you are, and I know you are, then at some point, you are going to have to step out of that boat. And you are going to be on water. And that footing is like, whoa, wait, wait, hold, oh, wait, this is new. I don't know. What is this? Why are my shoes wet? Why is this coming up to my ankle? What's going on? Why is my dress wet? Oh, I got to lift the dress up. Hold on, wait a minute. Hold on, is that a is that an octopus? Is that a shark? Like, wait, hold, hold. Like, you got it's it's brand new. It's brand new. It's not just um to sit there and sail along and roll like this and roll like that and roll. Like, no, at some point you got to get in the boat, get out the boat, and then that's when faith really kicks in. It's just like, okay, I don't know what is happening right now, but the good news is he got this. He got this, and he's revealing his secret plan to us. Yeah, Marquita says she is at the hold up part. She's like, no, hold up. <laughs> I feel you. Trust me when I say I feel you. Okay. All right, come on. Here we go. Isaiah, we back in message. We're going to be in message for the rest of the night. Okay, so if you're in a device or if you might be doing both, you might have your printed and you might say, let me get on the iPad or let me get on the laptop and let me see what he's talking about here. So we're going to be in message the remainder of the night. Okay, let me jump in Isaiah real quick because this is good Isaiah says then we're going right back to Ephesians okay Isaiah 54 9 and 10 hello Isaiah 54 9 and 10 message version I need your two things hold on if you couldn't join us live be sure to drop a comment hashtag replay so that I can acknowledge you and engage with you I want to remind you all that I am not providing notes so if you want to you can catch the replay here 
in Chosen Chick Discussion Group. This will be uploaded to YouTube and you'll be able to catch it there. And so take notes. These are very good scriptures. Now, when I do my hashtag replay tonight, I will drop in the comment section your scripture references. Other than that, you know, it's it's on you. I want you all to be responsible. I want you to be engaged. I want you to know that this is important. Okay. So that's my little speech. Isaiah 54, 9 and 10, the message version says this. This exile is just like the days of Noah for me. I promised then that the waters of Noah would never again flood the earth. I'm promising now no more anger, no more dressing you down. For even if the mountains walk away and the hills fall to pieces, my love won't walk away from you. My covenant commitment of peace won't fall apart. The God who has compassion on you says so. My God today. Do you hear what God is saying to you tonight through the prophet thousands of years ago? Right, raw, and relevant for you today. Hello? It's not about anger. It's not about dressing you down, busting you down, having to humble you. Okay, if you are in this obedience here, you don't have to worry about that. God says, I'm not going to walk away from you. I have compassion on you. I have a covenant, an agreement, a contract with you that I am going to keep you in peace. Okay, and it will not fall apart. You know, I was talking to somebody and I said, I read all of this right here, what you said. I said, and this right here looks like you looking for loopholes. That's what I said to the person because they sent me a whole bunch of stuff. And it was like, duh, 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 duh. I was like, this right here sounds like you're looking for loopholes. God said, there ain't no loophole in this. And he said, it will not fall apart. Peace is my plan for you. God, guess what? That means peace in your spirit. That means peace in your finances. That means peace in your home. That means peace on your job. If you got one, that means peace in your business. If you got one, that means peace in your body, your physical health. Don't play. Peace in your relationship. There is something <coughs> on my mouth. Excuse me. Peace. Peace be still. Okay, there go that water again. There go that boat again. Marquita, Daphne. There you go again. Peace be still. If God spoke to peace, you can speak to peace. Peace belongs to me. It's peace in my home. This is a sanctuary, okay? I'm not going, like mom used to say, excuse the term, but mom used to say, I've been catching hell all day. Mom used to work on a construction site, and I didn't understand why she kind of had this meanness, this kind of rough exterior about her until I worked at a construction site. And they are crazy. They are crazy. And I took that on. I was like, oh, y'all not going to play me. And I was, I was hell. I was hell. Five days a week, 60 hours a week for sure. Because what you're not going to do is play me. All right? But guess what? God got this. He's revealing his secret plan to us. Okay? We don't have to catch hell. Okay? We can speak peace. This job is going to be peaceful. This boss man is not going to come at me sideways. I'm going to make the most sales I need to make. Hello, somebody. I'm going to get the bonus. Hello, somebody. These students are going to reach their markers and achievement. Hello, somebody. That's it, period. You got to speak it. You got to walk it out. Okay, come on. Let me get back to Ephesians. I love that, though. The compassion in God spoke through the prophet to tell us that his covenant is not going to fall apart. He's a man of his word. He's not slack or slow. Concerning his promise, he can do exceedingly and abundantly. Do y'all see how all this tie in? That's why I love the word. I love the word. Daphne says, every time I start to wonder about my finances and I give it to Jesus, he amazes me every time. Daphne, can I share your testimony about what happened in the uh, grocery store? Tell me why I get ready to go to Ephesians. I'm going to wait till you say yes, because if you say no, you know I'm fine. Ephesians chapter 3, a message, y'all, a message, okay, rest of the night. I'm going to wait and see if Daphne says it's okay for me to say what happened. Okay. She said it's fine, okay. So, 
and make sure I'm about to I'm about to tell the story wrong, Daphne. But the quick version of the story <laughs> is she was in not a um not just any kind of cheapy uh store. She was in a nice grocery store, had her groceries, and I Daphne, tell the truth. Did you forget your wallet or what? Because like I said, I'm about to jack the story up. But anyway, the short version of the story is the person paid for her groceries. Pay for her groceries wouldn't let her um wouldn't let her pay them back or anything. But guess what? Daphne's um Daphne, Daphne's daughter, they are very sensitive in the spirit and they're like, mm, I feel like I need to pay for this person's coffee. Mm, I forget I feel like I need to pay. Forgot their wallet. Okay. Oh no, you Daphne know the time. Didn't somebody pay for you? Oh yeah, she said I got it all wrong. Okay. I thought this was two different stories. No. So <laughs> So the person in front of Daphne forgot their wallet and she paid for them. But Daphne, but then you told me that was at Starbucks when she went right to Starbucks. Then the person um paid um for her stuff. And it's happened multiple times. She's had special orders and she's like, no, let me pay you. Let me pay you. And then they won't even let her pay. See, I was going to get it right eventually. I mixed the story all up. <laughs> but what I am saying is, that Harris teaser. Okay. And so what I'm saying is that God has people everywhere. Okay. So just like Daphne, in that case, she was the person that God used to cover the person who forgot their wallet. I thought Daphne forgot her wallet, but Daphne covered that one. But turn right around though. And people are buying coffee for Daphne. People are giving gift cards to Daphne and she, she always comes out on top. So that's what it is. So she was the one that said, she gets nervous about her finances, but God always turns right around and does something else. And one thing about it is she's not going to be the one to ask or beg or whatever. When she goes out, she's going to have enough to do what she needs. But God says that he's doing exceedingly and abundantly above all. So enough is not enough. Somebody please write this down and take it in your spirit. Enough is not enough when it comes to God. He's the God of more than enough. Enough is not enough. When it comes to God, because he's the God of more than enough. Okay, come on, let's go. Ephesians chapter 3, we'll start at verse 1. Message version. And I'm going to go. So now I'm really caught up on um on my time. I had extra time and now I don't. <laughs> That's okay. Verse 1 through 3 says this. This is why I, Paul, am in jail for Christ, having taken up the cause of of you outsiders. So make a mental note of that. Outsiders. So-called outsiders. I take it that you're familiar with the part I was given in God's plan for including everybody. I got the inside story on this from God himself as I just wrote you in brief. Okay. Wait. Okay, let me go to verse 4 and come down. Hold on one second. Okay, let me read a little bit further because I got notes and I want us to um kind of stay in the flow. So let me start and I'm going to flow through. Let me go back to one. I'm going to go on down, okay? This is why I, Paul, am in jail for Christ, having taken up the cause of you outsiders, so-called. I take it that you're familiar with the part I was given in God's plan for including everybody. Hey, Lisa. Lisa's in the building. I got the inside story on this from God himself as I just wrote you in brief. Okay, verse 4 through 6. As you read over what I have written you, you'll be able to see for yourselves into the mystery of Christ. Okay, God is re revealing his secret plan for us right now. Okay, okay. None of our ancestors understood this. Only in our time has it been made clear by God's spirit through his holy apostles and prophets of this new order. The mystery is that people who have never heard of God and those who have heard of them all their lives, what I've been calling outsiders and insiders, stand on the same ground before God. They get the same offer, same help, same promises in Christ, Jesus. The message is acceptable. This is it. The message is acceptable and welcoming 
across the board. The message is accessible and welcoming across the board. So I love this because think about this. When you say accessible and welcoming, listen, Jesus is saying through Paul, okay, the Holy Spirit is saying through Paul, accessible and welcoming is supposed to be even across the board well guess what that means that that's how our lives have to be that's how our ministries have to be that's how our businesses have to be we cannot be okay mistreating anyone we can't be okay discriminating against anyone we can't be okay playing favorites come on somebody with people god says no our very lives that we are living have to be accessible and welcoming to everyone. Meaning, we can't be too busy. We can't be too cute. No, I'm not saying that you have everybody over for coffee. I'm not saying that you have everybody spend the night. I'm not saying that, okay? Let's not be cute. We're not saying that. But what we are saying is when it comes to being a light in someone's life, when it comes to walking out God's plan, if God says, hey, smile at this person. Hey, go ask that person how's their day going. Or say a prayer for that person. It might, they might not even know. You might not even say it to them out loud. But it has to be. You can't look at this person who is another race from you. You can't look at this person who goes to another church from you. You can't look. I'm getting all in it. You can't look at this person who has um, a different sexual orientation. Hello, somebody. Hello. You can't look at them because they have pink hair, purple hair, because they have a ring in their nose, a ring in their ear. You can't look at them. You can't look at homeless people. You can't look at somebody who's dirty, whose teeth are falling out, who don't have no shoes on their feet. It has to be accessible and welcoming to everybody. The gospel is for everybody. The light and hope on your life is for everybody. It's not for you. Stop being selfish. It's not for you. God didn't call you to only preach to your family. You wonder why your family don't want to take your phone calls now. All you want to do is preach to them. When God has called you to love them, to be who you are, to be just a light in their lives, to be your healthy, wealthy, and wise self, your successful self, just be it. Just be it. And they'll be drawn. Okay? And one day they may ask to go to church with you. Or one day you may ask them what they did Sunday and they told you they went to the church down the street. Praise God. Okay, y'all, we got to understand this. This is the secret plan. And the good news is God got this. God got this. He's revealing this plan to us. So the plan says that we have to be accessible and welcoming. Okay? And it's sometimes scary. But no, we can't have our little pics over here and our little clicks. And we can only deal with this kind of people. And we can only do this and only do this and only do this. No, the time has ended for that. Okay, time out for, for that. And Paul is saying, guess what? I'm in jail right now because of you. And I'm not saying that in a blame thing. I'm actually saying that in pride because I'm doing what Christ has called me to do. Because it's my job. I grew up in this. Okay, I've been talking about, I've been talk, taught about the Messiah my entire life. But some of y'all, most of y'all have never even heard of God. And it's my mission. It's what Paul says. It's my mission to make sure that you know the true and living God. Okay. Christ our Savior. That made it all worth it. That's what Paul is saying. That's what Paul is saying. I think my sister Sarah's in the building. Hey, Sarah. Yes. And let me just read the last part of verse 6 again. They get the same offer. I don't care if you've been in church five minutes or 50 years. We get the same offer, the same help, and the same promises in Christ. Okay? It's accessible and welcoming to everyone. And the thing about it is if we mess around, these new seeds in Christ, these new ones, they're going to come in, they're going to get it, and they're going to fall propel us. We're going to wonder how their business took off in five minutes, and we've been doing this for five years. Well, they dug in, they received the word, and they're applying the principles. And now, that's a launching pad for them. They done took off. And you looking like you happy for them, but you kind of like, what the heck? Okay, don't let it be you. Do not let it be you. Okay level playing field we all have equal opportunity equal access because we have free will oh this is good 
Oh, this is good. Okay, let me go on and then I'm going to see. Because, y'all, I got real excited, apparently, in the um <laughs> in my commentary notes or whatever. I know a lot of stuff, and I knew I was typing a lot. I was like, God, this is a lot. But it's okay. So let's look at verses 7 and 8. Paul says, the message version, okay? Paul says, this is my life work, helping people understand and respond to this message. I'm like, Paul, you're talking about me. Helping people understand and respond to this message. It came as a sheer gift to me. A real surprise. God handling all the details. Somebody please say that. I get excited that the comments are working because they don't work all the time. Somebody please put that in the comments for me. God handling all the details. All the details. When it came to presenting the message to people who had no background in God's way, I was the least qualified of any of the available Christians. God saw it, excuse me, saw to it that I was equipped, but you can be sure that it had nothing to do with my natural abilities. Y'all, come on, Marquita. Y'all, we have to realize that we cute. We educated all of that. Okay, all of that. All of that. But we are still filthy rags who have been washed clean in Christ. That's it. We have to stay at that humble position. We have to say, God, how could you choose me? Y'all know my story. I'm talking about a hood girl liable to say anything and do anything and tell you about yourself. How God chose me, I do not know. But he said, what I believe is that he said that he is going to take that crazy and use it for his good. I don't know if Nina's still in here because I can't see y'all all the way good. But somebody holler back at me. He, he decided that he was going to take this crazy. He was going to take this mouth, the mouth of the South. Hello, somebody. And use it for his glory. And I love it. And I love it. And I love it. So just know, you didn't get the opportunity because of your natural abilities, talents, and giftings. But God is choosing to use your natural abilities, talents, and giftings for his glory. And the good news is he got this. You, if you sat down and wrote out a plan, you couldn't do it. So God would be like, mm-mm, that ain't going to work. And the thing about it is the church, come on, I'm talking to the church now. The church has gotten so stiff and stale, hello. And that's why before the pandemic, it was dry and empty, okay, because we think it's cookie cutter. We think that this kind of sermon and this kind of high note and I jump around like this and I sing this song and I had a piano play like this right here, that that's going to work for everybody. And no, it does not. It does not. Just like everybody don't like the same toothpaste. Everybody don't like the same hamburger. Everybody don't like the same soda. Everybody don't like the same stuff every Sunday, every midweek service. No, you have to know who you are in God. Hello. You have to be plugged into the source. You have to be tuned in so that he can speak this freshness on you every time. That is the only way you're going to be successful. Guess what? In any area of your life. Because let me tell you something, what I know. Okay, being with the same man for 13, almost 14 years, the people that love you will get tired. It'll get stale. You can't do stuff the same way every time. Because somebody's going to be like, and what might have been good, tasty, and wonderful for five years, ten years, after a while it's going to be like, and you're going to wonder why the energy is different. You're going to wonder why it ain't hitting like it used to hit. Okay? I'm telling you, like I said, that applies to your job. That applies to your church. That applies to your loved ones. That applies to your man. Okay? Brother's going to see this later on YouTube. That applies. That applies to your boo. That's just it. But the good news is, God got this. If we let him, Marquita, if we let him handle all the details, if we let him reveal the secret parts of his plan, and we're not so busy, that's that word again, trying to control it, trying to do it our way, then we'll be fine. Definitely what you're saying. Even when people come against you at your job, don't be discouraged. The Lord has you in the palm of his hand. Even if you just became a Christian. I'm talking about your life changes instantly. Instantly, your life, your name is written in the land book of life, meaning your salvation is on lock instantly. And that means you have instant, unlimited access to God. That means you can pray anything. You can have anything in his will. And that means you don't do life the same no more. So even when people are acting stupid and jumping stupid, even when you are on different footing and don't know what's going on, even when that thing is not hitting like it used to hit and you got to go back to the drawing board, it's just like, okay, God, the good news is God, God, that he has a secret plan for you. He has a playbook just for 
you with your name on it, your success written in it, your health, your wealth, your wisdom written in there. And so you just got to find yourself in him. That's it. That's it. That's the beautiful thing about purpose. That's the beautiful thing about identity is finding yourself, the real you in Christ. Y'all, I wouldn't trade this for nothing in the world. I never would have imagined if you had a told me I would have ran from it even more. I wouldn't have wanted to do it. There's no way I would have signed up to spend 26 days in the hospital, to spend months on oxygen and medicine and doctor visits and oxygen and medicine and doctor visits. Like my head was literally spinning. Okay, my feet swollen up so bad that I couldn't even put on a flip-flop. Hello, somebody. Okay, have you read the story? Because it's real. I would have never signed up for that. And like I said, if somebody had even told me the whole thing, like, okay, you're going to have to go through this, but then you get all of this. I still think I would have been like, no, I'm good. Let me just stay. I'm just stay at this stupid construction worker job. And just, I'm, I'm good on that. I'm fairly certain I would have been like, no, it's okay. <laughs> but... Having stepped into this, living it out loud every day, I would not trade this for anything in the world. And God knew exactly what it would take. He knew how much pressure, he knew how much fire it would take to get me right here. And so the good news is he got this and he revealed his secret plan. He didn't tell me I was going to have to do it through the hospital and um, on the brink of divorce. He did not tell me that. But he did it, and I'm so grateful. And I'm here to tell, the good news is, I'm here to tell the story. And the, the good news is, you can't unhear the story. The good news is, now you have a choice. The good news is, now your life has an option. The good news is, it's no turning back. The good news is, you can turn it around right now. Yes, that oh Daphne, I love that story because Daphne has told me this, and like that, y'all think I go through some trippy stuff. Daphne goes through some trippy stuff. The Lord literally told Daphne that she would get COVID, and she got it twice. At one time, her whole household was down with it. Okay, and her kids have all kinds of stuff. Would you when you have teenagers? Teenagers have all kinds of stuff going on on any given day. So for all of them to have it, God told her, and she she didn't know if she was gonna die or not. And then how long you was in the hospital? Daphne, wasn't you? Well, I don't know how long you was in the hospital, but I know you were sick for um for like two months, right? So, oh, she did say he did show her that she wasn't going to die. Child, that thing is crazy. When I told y'all, I was praying for death. Like, I wanted to die. I was like, I'm out of here. The earth sucks. Let's go. Let's be done with this here. <laughs> like, beam me up, Scotty. Out. Boom. Love y'all out of here. That's how I felt. But God was like, chill out. <laughs> 54 freaking days. 54 days. Daphne was down. Okay. That was the first time. Still turned around and got it again. <laughs> Woo. Daphne said she was like beating me up too. Like, I love everybody, but I'm out of here. Like this, this has got tired. Okay. But God saw something different. Okay. We are, actually, that's a good note to end on. Let me see what else I got in here. Hold on. Y'all get your prayer requests ready. Don't put them in the comments yet. 14 days, second time. Yep, I think I knew that. Let me go back and close it with the meat of my text. Okay, let me say this right here, which I, I think I said this already, but let me get it right here off the notes fresh for you. Ready? God has been working his plan all along. That's it. God has been working his plan. God has been in the background saying, okay, it's going to take this. It's going to take this amount of financial struggle. It's going to take this amount of heartbreak. It's going to take this amount of arguments. It's going to take this amount of hurt. It's going to take this amount of questioning herself before she lets it go and fully give it to me. Okay, got it boom 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 and you like god are you serious and he's like yes <laughs> yes okay god has been working his plan all along the question is are you are you working god's plan 
Creflo Dollar said, and listen, I wish I hadn't even said his name because I don't want you to turn your ears off because he said some crazy stuff. But one of the best things he said years ago, I'm talking about, did I even know Chris? So this is over 10 years ago. I was living in LA. Work the word. He still says it though, but I, that's when it hit me like and stayed. Work the word. The word works. Hey, Alexandria. Alexandra. Alexandra. Let me say it right. Y'all know the other. my other sister is Alexandria. Alexandra, my girl. The good news is God got this. He is revealing his secret plan to us. Work the word because the word works. The word says, keep your mind stayed on him and trust him. He'll keep you in perfect peace. The word says, delight yourself in him and he'll give you the desires of your heart. The word says, walk up right before him and he will withhold no good thing from you. That's what the word says. The word says that you're going to be blessed in the city and blessed in the field, that you're above and not be So just work the word. Just do what the word says. That's all. Okay. Last bit of commentary. Then I'm going to go my last two verses and then we're going to be out of here. This I didn't say this already, but let me say how I have it in the notes. Once again, God has been working his plan all along. The question is, are you working his plan? God is a glory seeker. And if he has to bend you like a pretzel or snap you like a twig, he's going to get the glory. You can do it the easy way, which is obedience, submitting your will to him. Not my will, but your will be done, God. Yes, I will. I don't understand this. I don't know this. I don't know if I'm going to be received or not. I don't know how much money this is going to take, but I'm going to do it anyway. Hello, somebody. You can do it the easy way, which is obedience, or you can do it the hard way, which is rebellion. And that's how you get your net broke. Okay? That's how you wind up in the hospital for 26 days. I'm just, I can only tell you my story. Everybody has their own story. Okay? That is how it happens. So it's only two choices, y'all. It's the red pill or the blue. We've seen the movie. We know what it is. And you know what the reference is. If you don't know what that reference is, ask your sister in the comments. I'm not even going to ask that question. <laughs> Answer that question. Okay, come on. Now we're skipping. Y'all, when I tell y'all I had more commentary, but God know what he's doing. Oh, whether though, this is it. The good news is God got this. He's revealing his secret plan to us. He has shaped us in a way to walk through this world and let me just say this right here and then i gotta stop reading my commentary because i'm gonna keep talking whether the world likes us or not whether the powers that be like us or not whether our blood relatives like us or not we gotta work the word because the word works we gotta walk out this plan because this is what god is wanting for us period period and you gotta get to the place where I'm firm, I'm confident, I'm not trading this for nothing. This is what I'm doing, okay? Come what may, hell or high water, this is what I'm doing. And that's just it, okay? Now, look back to my key text, and then we don't get your prayer request ready. Message. God can do anything, you know? Far more than you could ever imagine or guess or request in your wildest dreams. He does it. This is how this is what I love. He does it. This is 21. He does it not by pushing us around, but by working within us his spirit deeply and gently within us. Y'all, the Holy Ghost is a gentleman. He's not gonna force you to do anything. He's not gonna force himself on you. He's gonna kindly suggest. And when you kindly reject, then he's going to kindly open life up to kindly whip you behind. But it's not going to be so kindly. And it's not a threat. It's just a principle. That's what it is. When you obey, you get the reward. When you don't, you get the consequence. That's it and that's all. Okay? One plus one is two. That's it. That's just, that's just how it goes. But guess what? The secret plan of God... Is he got this? The good news is he got this. It started when he was born of a virgin. Come on, somebody. He lived 30 years. Then his ministry activated. And for the next three years, he would preach the gospel. Do you call it the gospel when Jesus talks, talks about it? Well, he was preaching the kingdom. Let's say it like that. That <laughs> is the gospel once we got it. He was preaching the kingdom. Okay. They scandalized his name, trumped up charges, okay? Church folks, okay? 
legalist folks, okay? They arrested him. They beat him, okay? Battered him, hung him on the cross, slayed him, crucified him for you and I. He hung, bled, and died. Gave up the ghost because no man could take his life. He laid down his life for you and me. The ultimate sacrifice. Because he got this. It was in his plan all along. Okay? We owed him a debt. And he said, you know what? I'm going to pay off this debt because those are my children. I want them to return to me. They have sinned and they are far off. I want them back close. So I will do whatever it takes. And I want to do it once and for all. I'm tired. God, God said... I'm tired of the back and forth. I don't just want the goat. I don't just want the sheep. I want the lamb of God. Oh my God. Y'all, that's the message of the cross. That's the good news. And the good news is God got this. He's been working his plan all along from eternity. Before the foundation of the world. Before you were a twinkle in your daddy's eye. And a twinge in your mama's hips. Hello. God has got this. And so... We owe him. We owe ourselves to see what this plan is, to find out who we are in him and to do what he has called us to do. Come on, somebody. Oh, my God. And he can do exceedingly and abundantly above all we ask or think. Message version says what we can imagine or guess or request in our wildest dreams. He can do that. Okay, so let's live it out. Let's walk it out. Let's know, hey. God got this. I don't have to worry about nothing because God got this. All right. Y'all, I don't know about you, but that was good to me. Okay. I'm talking about good, good to me. Woo. Paul is not nothing to play with. That's, that's, that's a good guy right there. That's a good one. So prayer time, prayer time. And then I promise I'm going to get out of your way. I'm excited. I wish my girl Hazel would have been able to join us tonight. She designed, she designed this t-shirt and her Monday, her Monday, <laughs> her birthday is on Saturday. So if y'all see Hazel in the group, wish her a happy early birthday. Somebody can tag her in this. Let her know that I wore this great shirt. And some of some other of you have some great products that I um that you have blessed um, me with that you have shared. And I will find a way to share my own way. I'm not gonna say any names because um we're just gonna do that when it's time to be done. Hello? Okay, so your prayer requests. Your prayer requests, your prayer. Request, we're gonna pray. I'm gonna get up out of here. Y'all never mind this. Um, this is my favorite green skirt that I that I wear in the office. Don't worry about that to keep your eyes up here. <laughs> yes, praying for you. I pray that this word hits you in a different way. I pray that you are moved. I pray that you have a new respect for yourself for what God did at the cross for our big brother in the faith, Paul. I pray that you understand that you don't have to worry. You don't have to fret. God got this. Niece has RSV and the flu. How old is she? We believe God. We believe God. And guess what? The good news is God got this. So we speak a word of healing. We speak peace to the mom right now in the name of Jesus. And we thank you. Thank you for the moving of the symptoms thank you for free breathing thank you god for healing thank you thank you god for doing it three years old yes okay god we believe you anybody else oh i'm gonna close the laptop i'm supposed to be writing a prayer request down i'm only gonna give y'all about we're about to get up out of here i'm gonna give y'all about 45 more seconds yes we are so excited that um, Daphne is no longer a type 2 diabetes patient. Is patient the right word? We'll say patient because she's been under doctor's care. Type 2 diabetes is no longer her issue. Sitter. Did you say sitter or did you say sister? And I got on my glasses. Okay, so. Now and now to mess the scroll up. Okay. Babysitter, not sister. Okay. Well, she's our sister in Christ. Let me just put this so I can get my scroll back right. Y'all, I'm sorry. 
I thought you said your sister. <laughs> 17 years with diabetes, Daphne. Wow. Heal. Healer, healer, healer. All right, y'all. We're going to pray. Listen, if you have a lengthy or confidential prayer request, then you can email me at thehealedgirl at gmail.com. If you do, drop in the comments because we know there's a Wi-Fi lag and slow typers, much like myself. And so I will, um, I always open my eyes back up before I conclude the prayer so that I can um, pray, okay? Hallelujah. God, before we say anything, we just want to say thank you. Thank you, Lord God. You did it again. You showed up here. You supped with us. You loved on us, Lord God. You pinged our hearts in a special way. God, you warmed our very soul. God, I feel a spiritual hug. Thank you, God, for wrapping your arms around us on tonight. God, thank you for shifting our mind and shifting our heart. God, thank you for igniting us and reviving us, Lord God, that we will run on, Lord God, and work this thing out, walk this thing out as you have called us, God. We just love you, God. We thank you, God. We praise you, God. We could never say thank you enough. We say hallelujah to your name, glory to your name. We magnify your name. There's no one like you, Lord God. Great and holy are you, Lord God. Our great and matchless King, we worship you. We honor you. We want to just take this moment to praise you and bless your holy name to say thank you. Who wouldn't serve a God like this? And who are we that you are mindful of us? My God, today, but you revealed your secret plan to us, Lord God, and it was in your plan all along. So Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, help us to walk out this plan that you've secretly revealed to us, Lord God. All we have to do is praise our way out, faith our way out, position our hearts and minds and our feet and our hands for obedience. God, that we will just do what you say, that we'll do it when you say it and how you say it, God. Because you are a holy God, a righteous God, a wonderful God. There is none like you, Lord God, and I thank you, Lord. Thank you for blessing each and every one of my sisters, Lord God, that was able to join the live. Those that will be able to catch the replay, Lord God. Those brothers and sisters all around the globe that will catch this on YouTube, God. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Lord God, for these mechanisms that your gospel is being preached all over the world. Lord God, London, Australia, Korea, Japan. East Africa, North Africa, South Africa, West Africa, God, Mexico, Canada, Brazil, all over South America, God, all over Asia, in Russia, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. That is the message and the mission that you gave Paul, that you gave the prophets, the apostles, and the missionary years ago. They never could imagine that we would be flying on planes, that we would be using devices to sin in a matter of seconds your message god so thank you thank you for revealing this plan to us Lord god and the good news is you got this you got this our victory is already written written so we are winners we can't help but win either way we win either way and we believe you because the thing about it is god you can do anything you can do exceedingly abundantly, God. So we're going to dream big and pray bold. We are no longer going to be in lack, God. We are no longer going to be behind. We're going to be ahead. We're going to be in the abundance and the overflow, God. And I just thank you. We're going to have the abundance of health, abundance of wealth, and abundance of wisdom. Oh, my God. Abundance of health, abundance of wealth, and abundance of wisdom. I'm going to say it one more time for the Holy Ghost. Abundance of health, abundance of wealth. An abundance of wisdom, God. Thank you. Thank you for standing in your purpose. You've given us power and passion, God. You've fired us up afresh. God, just thank you. Lord, I want to lift up this three-year-old that has uh, RSV and the flu. Or I'm going to say had. We're going to speak it in past tense. Because, God, we know you as a healer. God, Daphne shared her testimony. Lord, God, 17 long years. Been dealing with diabetes, having to watch sugar, having to go back and forth to the doctor, test and everything, Lord God. And she is healed of it. The chart says it, God. And I thank you. That's what you said you were going to do. You said it either last year or the year before. I think you said the year before that you were going to do it so that you would bug out the eyes and make the jaws drop open of the doctor's. And the hospitals. God, and I thank you for doing that for this three-year-old. Thank you for 
my sweetheart, that brought forth the prayer request. Thank you for what you're doing for her children, blessing them and keeping them. Thank you for what you're doing in her life, in her marriage, in her home, in her work, in her business, in her dreams. God, bless her. But God, we thank you that the praise report will come, Lord God, that this three-year-old, Lord God, is walking fine, talking fine, breathing fine. And the symptoms are gone. So thank you for healing and touching that baby. Thank you for sending peace to the mom, Lord God. Thank you that the word will be spoken, God. And I pray that the mom will say, somebody pray for me. Somebody pray for my baby. And now all is well, God. Because all is well. Because one thing about it, God, you do all things well. God, and Paul has shown us that this secret plan, Lord God, is in our favor. So we don't have to try to do tug of war with you. We don't have to try to snatch something away from you. The best place to be is in your hands. That's the safest place to be. God is in your will and in your purpose, God. So just thank you. Thank you for God. Thank you for God. Thank you for God. Thank you for God. God, thank you for the unspoken prayer request. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you for... I want to pray right now, God, for my sisters specifically, God, who are dealing with bouts of anxiety, bouts of fear, bouts of guilt, and bouts of shame, God. Even pride that will keep them for asking for help. Um, even the spirit of overwhelm that will keep them from doing what they themselves can do. Sometimes they just need a jump start. But God, they look at that thing. They look at that mountain and it seems so big. They look at that elephant and it seems so big. They don't know how to take the first bite. They don't know how to take the first step. So they do nothing. And they find themselves in a stuck and stagnant place. But God, the thing about it is when we stuck and stagnant, it's just like we're moving backwards because the world going to keep on turning. But God, I thank you for giving them forward progress. I thank you for giving them the jolt, that fresh injection, and busting them out of that stuck and stagnant place. God, thank you. Fear is no more. Anxiety is no more. Depression is no more. Overwhelm is no more because their confidence and their faith is in you. Their trust is in you. Thank you for healing minds, healing hearts, healing bodies on tonight. Thank you for healing relationships. God, thank you for blessing the very works of our hands, the very steps of our feet, the very words of our mouth, that we will speak life, that we won't be discriminatory, Lord God, and have picks and favorites, Lord God, but that our lives, our businesses, our um, work, our ministries, Lord God, will be welcoming to all, that we will have a level playing field with all, because that's what Paul said, that's what you said through him. And we thank you for that. Thank you for God. Thank you for moving by your spirit. God, I want to speak to respiratory systems right now. Lord, line them up with your word. Heal them, touch them, deliver. I want to speak to gastrointestinal systems right now in the name of Jesus. Line them up with your word. Heal them, touch them right now, God. Lord, I want to speak to mental, cerebral right systems right now in the name of Jesus. Heal them, line them up with your word. God, I want to speak to muscular and skeletal systems right now in the name of Jesus. Line them up with your word. Touch them. Heal them. God, I want to speak to dermatological systems right now. Line them up with your word, God. Touch them. Heal them. Do it. God, if there's anything that I've left out, overlooked, seal it in the Holy Spirit. God, I want to speak to someone's dream right now. God, bring it back to life. Breathe fresh wind into it. Give them a fresh fire for it, a fresh zeal for it. Let them get excited about it again. In Jesus' holy name, I thank you. Thank you for that family that's going to be more unified as ever before. We love you on tonight, God. In your name, we pray. By faith we receive and we believe we call it done. Because one thing about it, you can do anything. In Jesus' holy name, we pray and give thanks and we say amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah and amen. Oh my God. Woo. I don't know what to say about God, but wow. Wow, wow, wow. Woo. Jesus. Wow. God is awesome and I'm excited.
thank y'all so much for being here. Listen, guess what? We get down like this every week, every week. Somebody say every week, every week, Thursday at 7 p.m. So let me just give a little bit of heads up. It's November, so we already know what it is. We're getting ready to go into the holidays. And so we know Thanksgiving falls on a Thursday. So as that time comes, we'll make arrangements. Guess what? Big, beautiful, blessed holiday. <laughs> My birthday, yes falls on a Thursday, November the 10th. So I'm talking to the Lord. We might have a day party. I feel that in my spirit. So I'll let you know. Uh, but other than that, unless it is a special set of circumstances, we're here Thursday, 7 p.m. Eastern every week. So get excited about that. Listen, meet me back here next week. But guess what? Don't wait till next week. Jump, dive, get in the group. Chosen Chick Discussion Group. Because guess what? Tomorrow is Fun Friday. So listen, we got your word of the day. We got your food for thought. We got your joke. And then we got games, games, games. Get into it. You are going to love it. Right around lunchtime, we have our official chick chat. There's always a very real life, real interesting scenario. And so I want to know what you would advise. What would you do? Last week we had, uh, was that last week or two weeks? <laughs> two weeks ago, a, a lady had left um, the father of her children. She said he had some stuff going on and she just didn't want to be with him no more. Well, come to find out he was breaking into her house and spraying his cologne. She didn't understand why everywhere she went, it smelled like him and it made her miss him. And so, of course, she took him back. But guess what? His fool behind told her. He was like, oh my God, it worked. <laughs> that she don't know what to do. Because guess what? In about five more minutes, he's going to be trifling again. And she's going to want to put him out again. But guess what? Anyway, that's just one little example. These scenarios crack me up. And y'all's advice and response to them always crack me up. So that's right around lunchtime tomorrow, our official chick chat. Check it out. And I'm already telling you about my birthday, November 10th. Most likely we'll have a day party. Listen, CSRA and surrounding areas, Marquita, I'm looking at you. Atlanta, Savannah, Charlotte. What's, what else is near us, y'all? Y'all know what I'm talking about. If y'all are within three hours driving distance, you want to have your face in the place, okay? For my birthday bash. Of course, I'm not releasing the location um, privately. I mean, publicly because it's crazy out there. But um, if you are really interested, then hit me up and um, I will make sure that you get your invite. And um, I think that's all I got, y'all. Thank you so much for your support of the pod, Bold Journeys Podcast. If you have not listened to the latest episode, do that for me. tboldmedia.com, all major streaming outlets, wherever you get your pods. That's Bold Journeys with two Zs. Check it out, and um, I know, Daphne, you need to be down here. That would be so dope. I will probably cry. Anyway, um, so, yes, y'all have a fantastic night. Oh, I forgot to pray sweet sleep. Sweet sleep on um, my sisters. God bless them. Sweet, 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 sweet rest on tonight in Jesus' name. So, yes, y'all get it in. Have an amazing night, and I look forward to seeing you tomorrow for Fun Friday and next week right here same bad time same bad channel until then good night